was to gain a better understanding of why it is important to create and maintain collaborative relationships between parents and teachers when introducing and using ICT in the classroom. Our focus is specifically on New Zealand teachers working in the primary and secondary education sectors in all decile level schools. We are interested in both how ICT can help foster collaboration and communication between schools, students and parents. However, we are also interested in the importance of parental involvement when introducing ICT into the classroom. We want to know what roles parents can play in collaborating with schools in the use of ICT. Are there links between successful implementation of ICT and parental support for ICT in schools? When can ICT actually inhibit this relationship? Are parents always supportive and what barriers do teachers face when trying to develop collaborative relationships and how can they overcome them? This idea came across as powerful as we consider how important collaborative relationships between parents and teachers are in all areas of school life. Surely, given that ICT implementation can be full of uncertainties, a collaborative relationship is vital to ensure classroom success and effective personalised lifelong learning beyond the classroom. So as parents and teachers, we want to know what hinders and what inhibits the development of a collaborative relationship between school and home concerning the use and support of ICT. We chose this topic so we could find out more about this and determine why collaboration is so important. Armed with this information, we as teachers and parents can be better prepared to nurture collaborative relationships and ensure our future teaching and learning experiences with ICT in the classroom and at home are more likely to be successful. To quote Condi and Munro, while much is written about the potential for using ICT to bridge the gap between in and out of school learning and to gain parental support, improved homeschool links are as yet unrealised in many instances. We think it's time to realise them. Why do we think our topic is important, you may ask? To quote Kenta, research has proven that when parents and teachers work together, everyone benefits. Students tend to earn higher grades, perform better on tests, attend school more regularly, have better behaviour and show more positive attitudes towards themselves in school. As teachers and parents, this is our ultimate goal, and as a group we wanted to learn more about ICT's role in this important collaborative relationship. As children's attitudes often reflect those of their parents, it is important that parents are aware of why their children are using technology, and to what extent. As shown in our scenarios, there are different views on incorporating, incorporating technology into the classroom, and these parental views can greatly enhance or inhibit success of technology's use. Harris and Goodall state parents have the greatest influence on the achievement of pupils through supporting their learning in the home rather than supporting activities in the school. It is their support of learning within the home environment that makes the maximum difference to achievement. We learnt that the more input and support we have on a parental and community basis, the more success teachers and students will experience. This can be enriched by a collaborative relationship. Clearly communicated expectations and exemplar practice can provide a nudge that enables students to overcome perceived barriers and lead to improved practice, change behaviours, greater efficiency and ultimately enhance children's learning. When looking specifically at barriers related to parental support and collaboration, the literature often refers to the digital divide, the inequalities of access to technology between individuals, communities and even countries. Essentially, even though technology is widely available, we cannot assume that technology and internet access is available in every home. However, while access to technology is a very real barrier, in terms of developing collaborative relationships with parents and successfully implementing ICT in the classroom, there is a growing amount of research that suggests that it is the divide around skills that teachers need to be aware of. For instance, the Almeda and all argue that higher socio-economic groups use technology in more creative ways and parents and professions or with higher education tend to nurture their children's technology use, while less educated but well-off parents tend to leave their children to work it out themselves. Valkyrie also makes a similar argument that while lower socio-economic parents value their children learning ICT skills, they don't have the knowledge to guide their children in this endeavour.
Instead, they would strive to provide computers for their children, but usually the default use was as a source of recreation. Vatalaki and all also note that parents uncomfortable with using technology were less likely to want to be a part of their child's instruction with it. While the literature generally painted parents as usually supportive of ICT in the classroom, this was not ubiquitous. Bourgogne and all looked specifically at parental acceptance for game-based learning. Their research showed that while some parents see some potential educational value in gaming, on the whole, parental preference for it was low. Yul and all noted that parents had many concerns about ICT use in the classroom and at home, including fears for the children's health, both physically and developmentally, concerns over children becoming reliant on online information, and the effect of ICT on their children's thinking ability development. Finally, the digital divide is often illustrated as a divide between a technology-rich environment in schools contrasting with technology-poor homes. Henderson, however, also argues that it can equally be the contrast between a technology-rich and diverse home life and a narrow and restricted school technology environment. All that I have mentioned has clear implications for teachers when trying to gain both student and parental buy-in for ICT initiatives in the classroom. Obviously not every child will have access to technology or internet access at home. Alternatively, schools themselves may find that they are unable to provide technology-rich environments equal to what students have at home. Parents may support ICT initiatives in the classroom but may not have the mastery themselves to support their, student, their children's learning with ICT at home. Parents may support some applications of ICT in the classroom but not others, for instance game-based learning. Parents may be worried outsiders, wondering if too much ICT could have negative effects on their children's learning and development. Communication is the key enabler to collaboration. This communication can be achieved in many ways, including traditional talk. Also, school websites can allow to make work, ideas, policies available to present to parents and even the wider community through blogs, posts and newsletters. While also Byron 2009 states that some parents would welcome the use of digital technologies for more quick, effective communication through tools such as email and text messaging to communicate with the school about learning and ICT. Therefore, collaboration between parents and teachers in both the implementation and the use of ICT in the classroom can be enabled through the use of ICT itself. Collaboration can also empower parents to be an extra support for teachers at home and ensure that children meet the school's expectations of the use of ICT, especially in terms of safety. It can positively influence parents' roles in terms of them being more supportive and having a positive attitude towards the process of learning and participating with new technologies at home. This can lead to parents feeling more confident in welcoming ICT into their home and allowing their children to have quality independent access with the technology that is available. Also, collaboration allows for negotiated, negotiated practice as a way of better understanding young people's practices at home and how these are connected and worked out across home, school and other contexts. These practices are inclusive of ICT and therefore communication can enable teachers to be aware of the type of access and use of ICT at a student's home. Collaboration and support between parents and teachers can overcome concerns about ICT and provide parents with the tools, knowledge and confidence to be supportive and in even some cases learn from their children. As Korea 2013 found, Youth influence their parents' use of many technologies up to 40% of the time. We have decided to run our discussion on a scenario base, introducing the good, the bad and the ugly. We feel that this format will promote a great discussion and the opportunity for us all to share personal IT experiences. You will be introduced to three scenarios, each representing a potential situation in a classroom using digital technologies. Although these scenarios are fictional, we believe they could be authentic and have designed them on our experiences, beliefs and the literature. We ask that you read each scenario and the four questions that follow and respond sharing your ideas or experiences with the class. Each scenario will have its own thread and be monitored by a group member. We look forward to your contributions.